I have a hunger for a delicious pork milanese. Let's get going. Could have been the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life, but it got your attention and it's going to be delicious. And thank you to the National Pork Board for sponsoring today's episode. It's going to be amazing. Pork milanese. Think about this. You take a pork chop, you pound it thin. You add seasonings to the outside. You put it in flour, then in egg, and then in breadcrumbs, and then you cook it in a pan in oil and butter until it's perfect. And we're doing this from scratch. You know what that means? You know what that means? It means I'm a little scared. No, uh, we're not. We're not growing our own porks or anything. <laughs> yes, I know they'd be called pigs. We're not raising our own pork and then and then getting it to the point where there's a well you know well let me show you what i mean by kind of starting from scratch from the ground up wow do you feel the thunder in that this ladies and gentlemen is a bone-in loin of pork and the bones are here you can see that well they're all across this is how, if you wanted to do a roast loin of pork, this is what you would start with. You'd probably tie it up so it stays nice and round on you. You would season, it would go in the oven. It would come out super delicious. Tons of flavor because of what you've done to it. All the right things. I really wanted you to get a sense of this because you might want to buy one like this one day. You might say to yourself, I feel like venturing out and going a little above and beyond than just buying a straight pork chop. And by the way, here's your regulation everyday pork chop. If I cut straight down like this, I will separate it from the other ones and I'll have a bone in pork chop if I wanted that. Actually, so let's do this, Max, okay? I'm gonna just cut this guy off. So we see the bones across here. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? All I will do to separate is I'm gonna cut down here like this in between and traverse the little bit of bone at the bottom, make one solid cut. And that's a gorgeous pork chop. Anybody, anybody would be happy to have this. Look how gorgeous that is. You can't help but feel like a butcher. I know they do way more than this, but normally you go to the store, you come back with a couple of these. Now look what we're doing. But there's a reason why I'm doing this which I'll get to in a second. But one of my favorite things about pork while I'm standing here holding this is they're essentially a blank canvas. Anything you want to do to this, it will take the flavor willingly. If this pork chop could talk, it would say, put flavor on me. Here, put flavor on me. Bring me spices, sauces, deliciousness. I will do it all for you, Sam. Too creepy? Too creepy? But, but that's, that's the best thing. That's why these things are so great. You want to make this Asian in flavor? You can do it. You want to make it Greek in flavor, Mediterranean? You can do it. You want to make it Canadian in flavor? Well, just be super polite and say please and thank you a lot as you're cooking this. But here's the reason for the bone in loin. It's this. I want to take the bones off and cook them separately. <laughs> Wait, Sam, you're telling me we're not just making a delicious, perfectly crispy, amazing pork milanese today, but we're also doing something separate with the bones? Well, yes, uh, Alan, we're doing something separate with the bones and you're gonna like it a lot. Let's start by getting the bones off of this though first, okay? in one big whack. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna stand this guy up as much as I can. Hello, my friend. Like that. Bones here, the bones run down here, down to the bottom. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go zoop, but slowly. I'm gonna follow the bones along. So we take the knife, just where the bones end right here. I'm gonna start to cut this way. And I'm going to go slow because I don't want to make any mistakes. But I want to hug the bones as I go down like this, right? 
See how this is happening? And then you get to this point and you're almost ready to have this and this. So now think about the world's biggest pork chop and that's what it is. This is what we're dealing with now. This is fantastic. But let's look at the bones for a second. Here they are. I did as good a job as I could, but there's a lot of meat here. There's meat here. And let's not forget what's in between these guys, because that's really the good stuff. When you cook the bones, the flavors are really intense. And I don't want to lose that. So watch what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to take off this, this back membrane because I don't want that. So if I just put my knife in like this and then take a piece of paper towel because it helps with the grip and just grab this. If I'm lucky, I come off. This is not coming off. Don't show this. This will not come off. You pull slowly, see what comes off. It didn't come off perfect, which it almost never does. And that's why I get mad sometimes but when you go to eat these things, and we're gonna be eating these just like you would spare ribs or anything, we don't need this membrane on the back. We really don't. So this is good, it's perfect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open them up a little bit, just cut in between. So when these things start to cook, we get the benefit of the flame inside here. What I'm making for you now is one of the best barbecue snacks you'll ever have. I say you have bones always at the ready and when you're outside and you're gonna grill pork chops or, or, or whatever for your friends and family, that you throw some of these on first. You're gonna be amazed at how great they are. Amazed. So we continue to open these guys up. This, this, and there you go. That is beautiful. It's just gorgeous. This piece here could be cut. But when this starts to cook on the grill, and you know what? Unfortunately, this is like a throwaway piece sometimes, and it shouldn't be. First, we need to make a little sauce. We move this, and we do this. And our sauce begins with mustard. Then we add soy sauce. You know that's gonna do that umami thing that just makes the flavors happen. I'm using hot sauce now. And the only other thing, big pinch of kosher salt and pepper. Try to keep it in the bowl, Sam. That will help. And we mix. And we'll get these guys on a plate and start a quick baste on them. Ribs on. We'll give the back of them a little baste. In between, flip these guys over. A little more here. And we'll just let these sit and start to suck in these flavors while the grill heats. All right, here's what I've done, Max. I've cut a giant chop out of this, boneless, of course. And now what I wanna do, I could just start to flatten it, but it's easier if you give it a little help. So I'm gonna start to butterfly it a little bit. And what that means is that I'm gonna make a cut here and start to open it up like a book, right? If my cling film would just cooperate and stay off to the side, I'd be very happy. So now, here, here, there. So now you can see, look, now it's got a lot more surface area, right? Now what we do is we take another piece, another piece of cling film goes down over the top. And look, we have it sandwiched in here. Hello, my friend. Now, using something heavy that is not a mallet because I don't have one. I think I had one. I think somebody gave me one as a gift. And I just cannot find it. So you want to hit and sort of pull towards you. You know what I'm saying? Drag it to extend the size of it. Lots of turning as you go.
until it gets to the point where it's wide and about a quarter of an inch thick. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, I've got a little repair work to do, but I always seem to have repair work. I get too aggressive when I do this. All right, this is perfect. Let's start our dredging station because that's what's important. I think everybody knows it's a three part dredge that we traditionally use. The first is flour. The pork will go in here. Then the pork will go into this bowl with beaten eggs in it. And then into panko, this crispy Japanese breadcrumbs that we're going to season first. They're going to get onion powder. They're going to get garlic powder, paprika, a big pinch of salt and pepper, and for green and deliciousness, some fresh chopped parsley. We'll mix this with our hands max. Spread it out. And now we can dredge. First, we go into the flour. A nice even coat. Shake in both sides. I really believe it's counterintuitive, but the flour helps the egg stick, which helps the crumb stick. So next into the egg. We flip. Make sure everybody's got some on. And then straight into our friend, the panko. Oh, gosh. This. Push down and then flip them over. And that side. And now you want to make sure everything is covered here. Okay, this looks good. This looks amazing. Okay, now it can rest in here for a minute. Because it's just sitting in this dry. Now we can get the grill, the ribs, this going, and everything. As the weather starts to turn for many of us all around the country. Okay, well, clearly it's already turned here in San Diego. But as many of you start to get into better weather, you're going to be going outside to the grill. And that's the great part of pork inside, outside, in the toaster oven. Yes, in the toaster oven you can do that. Maybe I need to show you that one day. Uh, saute pan, ground, whatever. It's, it's as versatile as you can work the flavors. There are that many ways to cook it. But the grill clearly is one of the best ways. But I'm not just using the grill today for direct heat because I'm cooking on a pan. I'm using my grill like a stove. And yes, you can do that. People forget. It's just a big, hot surface that's outside. Use it for everything. This will be amazing in here. Amazing. Amazing. Why is my voice doing that? Amazing. Grill's hot, so let's start with the ribs. Look how gorgeous they are. I'm so excited. Ah, yeah, that's what you want to hear. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's what you want. Now, we're going to be turning them a bunch, and that's okay. It's not a thick uh, chunk of meat, so they're not going to take too long, but we definitely want to get them cooked through. And here's a really important point on pork cooking. Let me give you an analogy. You know how back in the day we didn't wear seat belts when we drove? Because frankly, we just didn't know better. It took a while before we realized the benefit, how much better it was wearing a seat belt. Watch me tie this in. Back in the day, we used to cook pork to 165 degrees because someone the government, I think, not exactly sure, said that's where you needed to go to make it safe. Well, guess what? We wear seat belts now and we cook pork to 145 degrees. That 20 degrees difference. The difference between pork at 165 and 145 is like the difference between me at 5, 10 and a half and my desired height of 6, 2 and a half. It's significant, ladies and gentlemen. Pork at 165 is ruined. 160 is ruined. 145, it's perfect. And don't freak out if you see that there's still a little pink in it because that's okay. 145, regardless of the color, is okay. I'm glad I got that off my chest. You got that? Got what it. temperature? 145. Thank you. And now for the Milanese itself. We start with some olive oil in the pan and some decent glugs because 
Well, we need to. And that will act as lubrication, but to flavor our lubrication, some butter and the oil keeps the butter from burning. The two of them together are like the world's best, most flavorful combination. And when the butter's melted and everything's bubbling and starting to foam and do beautiful things, we're gonna be ready for our pork. And because my grill is not perfectly flat, I can see I'll be lifting a bit. And we're in. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Everything we want is happening right here in front of us. The ribs are cooking. The milanese is starting to cook, bubbling around the edges. So the goal is simple. Probably three, four minutes aside, uh, you want golden brown, and when it's golden brown, it's going to be amazing. There's that word again, amazing. Let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, I'm ready to turn that if you're ready to watch me turn that. Ready. Here we go. Oh. Look at the bubbliness. That's a gorgeous picture. And while we're here, Let's give these guys, oh, mamma mia, and always a baste. In between, in between, in between. Looks like, it's like a little pork hand. I'm telling you, this snack is going to be unbelievable. And when it's ready and gorgeous, off she comes. Oh, come on, Max. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty. And one final little base on the back of these guys. And off they'll come onto a plate. Oh boy, I cannot wait. All right, Maxie, here's how this is gonna go down. I have a little arugula here. I call it dressed arugula. And that just means it's got a little olive oil on it, a little lemon juice and some salt and pepper. And now we're gonna take our gorgeous Milanese and just stick him right there. The only thing that we're going to do to him is a little fresh lemon juice over the top. Oh gosh, my stomach just did a quick little flip. And that's it. I know people dump the salad right in the middle of it, but I like the idea that the crispiness is maintained without salad, liquid and juice all running down into it. I worked hard to get this crust on here. Come on, I'm keeping it. So it's rather exceptional looking, I have to admit. The crisp is unbelievable. I mean, arugula, you need a little something to go with it. I mean, come on. But now a bite, shall we? Have a bite. Let's just, uh, we'll go right here. How about this? Right where you're covering everything? Oh, sorry. The camera? I'll go left-handed. <laughs> is this better? Not left-handed. Left-handed. I'm no good left-handed. Oh. Snap, snap, snap. Come on, wait, look. Look it, it's perfect. It's gorgeous. It's, it's, wait. This is when I feel bad for people watching because they can't do this. Oh my God, you hear this? Oh my God, who wouldn't want this? Um, so a couple things to know. Well, I do things like this, somebody will write in and go, and hey, it's greasy. If you cook at the right temperature, it's not greasy. This is not, there's, there's, no, there's no grease. Forget the grease. It's delicious. If it was greasy, you wouldn't hear crunching. Mmm. Mmm. The flavors. A little garlic, a little onion. Tiny bit from the, uh, the paprika. All good. Here's one of my favorite parts of pork. Three ounces of pork loin. Okay, maybe not breaded like this, but just say grilled, barbecued pork loin. Three ounces has 24 grams of protein. That's a lot, and that's really good. And only 165 calories. Conversely, to get the same amount of protein, you'd have to have one and a half cups of black beans, that also has more calories, or ready for this, six and a half cups of broccoli. 
to get 24 grams of protein. Let me think. Six and a half cups of broccoli versus three ounces of pork loin. Hmm. What would I do? What would I do? I would take the pork any day of the week. That's why it's so tremendous. You know what else is tremendous? These ribs. We gotta get one of these. <laughs> Here we are. Remember what I said? Little bit of pink? It's absolutely okay. It's temperature, it's not color based. Now, who doesn't want a bite of this? Mustard, soy, the hot sauce. Mmm. Mm. Spicy, mm. tangy, so delicious. Look, don't throw this away, leave this. Make sure that this is part of your regular lineup. Ask the butcher. Hey, Alan, you got any uh, ribs that you cut off of pork loin? I like to take those home. He might hook you up. You never know what they've got. You never know that Mrs. Swenson wasn't in there five minutes before you and said, Alan, please take off the ribs. I don't like to deal with them. And that's okay. Mrs. Swenson's loss is your game. Mrs. Swenson's loss is your game. Not game. Gain. I said gain. Mrs. Swenson, Mrs. Swenson's loss is your gain. What have we learned here today? Mrs. Swenson's loss is your game. <laughs> what have we learned here today? We've learned that pork is ridiculously versatile. It has 24 grams of protein in only three ounces. You can do a ton of things with it. You can do this with it. You can do this with it. Who wouldn't want to do this? I'd like to thank National Pork Board for sponsoring today's video. So thank you. And if you'd like more information, more facts, or more recipes, just go to www.pork.org forward slash cooking.